Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at, today we have another video and we're going to be looking at electric conductors in static situations. Instead of um, just doing a problem or a couple problems like the last few videos, we're going to just look at this concept and dive into it and maybe do one problem but it's going to be a simple problem and not like an Olympiad problem. So let's just start by drawing a conductor. So if we draw a conductor of arbitrary shape, what do we know about it? So let's imagine that it was in some electrical field. It's the electrical field that it's in. So what's going to be an electrical field inside here? So we can figure this out by considering some properties of conductors. So what are conductors? Conductors are are materials that have um, okay, so conductors are materials that have free moving electrons that is um, the electrons are free to move or as in, because like that's why they're used for wires so that electrons can travel and that's why you get electrical currents and so basically as opposed to an ins ins insulator which the electrons are static and they can't move. So, so if, so let's just consider an electron here. An electron. So, and let's consider the E field. So let's say the E field was pointing this way. And right now we're considering a static situation. So this is after the E field has been applied and some time has passed. So if an electron was here and there was an E field here, then the electron would actually be moving because this E field would provide a force, right? Because that's what electric, fo electric fields do. And that's false because we are seeing this static situation. So we can't actually have any E field inside. So electrical field is zero inside a s conductor during a static situation. So, so now that we know that, let's think about some other things. So basically, the electrical field will always be zero regardless of what is happening outside the conductor inside the conductor the electrical field will be zero so we haven't actually really shown how this will happen and basically the charges will distribute themselves on the surface exactly so that the field is zero and that's pretty that's pretty cool right because we can't even calculate that for an arbitrary shape, but the electrons and things are able to go to the exact positions and able to figure that out. So now let's consider electrical potential. Electrical potential or potential energy, it doesn't really matter, actually potential. So let's consider equally potential lines. Where is the potential equal on this conductor? So I'll just tell you the answer, it's the outside of the conductor, the outside surface is going to have, the outside surface is going to be an equal potential. And how do we know that? Well, let's suppose the equal the outside surface was not an equal potential, and the equal potential is actually something like this, and then it followed the rest of the outside surface. So now let's consider um, an electron right here. electron um, on the surface here and if this is not an equal potential then it will want to move to areas of lower potential and oh yeah and there's going to hmm. so let me actually introduce you um, to charges first before I actually finish talking about that so let's consider this electron or actually any charges in this electrical conductor. So we already found that the E field is here inside. So let's think about how the charges distribute themselves inside a conductor. So let's say a charge was, the charges were here. There were some charges here. And this is false because these are gonna repel each other and it's a static field. So we can't have charges come together. So what if we had charges just spread out along this area 
then let's consider a Gaussian surface right here and because there is positive charge here or there is charge here the flux is not is going to be zero is going to be zero so not the flux is going to be zero the flux is going to be positive which means there's e fields which is a contradiction again so basically the only way for charges to be distributed on a conductor are that they lie all along the outside. So now going back to the equipotential, if the equipotential was not this surface, it wasn't the equipotential wasn't the surface, then that means the um, charges can move along the surface, right? And there are points that are going to have different potentials, and that means the electrical the electrons will move into those lower potentials. But with a static situation, so that means the surface has to be an equipotential. So we are now we've talked about how charges distribute themselves on electrical conductors, where the equipotential is on electrical conductors, and now we just have to consider things like outside sources. But before we do that, let's do one more special case of a conductor. What if it was hollow like this and inside it was like that and this is air and we placed um let's say we placed a bunch of positive charges to charge this conductor how would these charges distribute themselves again so so there's added plus charges on here and let's think about how they'll distribute themselves so we said that they always go to the surface, but now we have two surfaces. So will the positive charges go to go here and like maybe have some negative charges here and some positive charges here? What are we gonna have? So we can do this with Gauss's law. And we have to pick a specific Gaussian surface that is helpful. Let's consider a surface going right through the boundary and we already established inside conductors there is zero electric field so the flux through the surface must be zero the flux through the surface must be zero but and that means the total charge on this inside surface must be zero so all the charges go to the outside again which is kind of um, surprising because intuitively you might think some go to the inside some go to the outside but that's not how it works. So now we're going to consider a spherical conductor because spheres are nice. Consider a, a hollow spherical conductor. But this time we're going to put a charge, a positive charge of plus Q on the inside. So we've only dealt with like external electric fields right now and charges placed on the conductor, but we haven't dealt with charges inside a hollow conductor. So the question I'm going to ask is what is the electric field at this point here? This is sort of weird. If you just look at this intuitively, you might be like, oh, it's just called the systems R. It's just KQ over R squared, right? Because also, this charge is not on the center. It's going to be off-center. Well, it can be on the center, but we're going to say it's off-center for more generality. And you might say, oh, it's just going to be kq times the distance between those squared, right? But that is actually not the case because the conductors have charges which redistribute themselves, which is really weird because if this was an inducting shell, sorry, not an inducting, uh, an insulating shell, then nothing would happen, it would just be normal, right? But because it's a conductor, all these special things happen. So let's consider a Gaussian surface going through the center again. I'm not going to draw it, but just think about it. What does that tell you? And what does that tell you about the charge that's going to build up on this inside surface? Previously, we said there was nothing on the inside, and we said the charge on the inside surface was zero. But we need the flux to be zero. And now there's a plus Q charge on the inside. So the total sum of the charges inside have to be zero in this Gaussian surface. So there actually has to be 
negative q on this inside surface. And if there's negative q on the inside surface, and oh, I never stated this, but the conductor is going to be um, non -ch not charged in the beginning. So on the outside surface, there's going to be a plus q so that the total charge remains constant by conservation of charge. So what is the electric field here? field here now? Now we have like these several surfaces with different amounts of charge and we have like a point charge here as well. So what's going to happen? And the point charge isn't even on center. But what actually happens is that if you think about the how these two cancel each other out, right? Because there has to be no electrical field inside here. So from the, from the point of view of the, of the person or whatever is here, this just looks like uh, a charged shell with charge plus Q. That might be a, bit, a bit difficult to understand, but the electric field from these insides, the things on the inside combined, is zero everywhere. So it's just like having nothing and adding a shell to the system. So that's one way you could think about it. And so if we call this distance R, call this distance R, then the Electrical, electrical field here is just E equals K times Q over R square. No matter where this, um, no matter where this uh, charge is, like you can take this charge, you can move it around. Oops, you can move it to like here. You can put the charge here. Sure, the charge distribution on the inside is going to same, stay the same. But the charge distribution on the outside in the electrical field here is going to stay the same because from the point of view of the outside of the shell and this everything on the inside just looks like nothing and that's pretty amazing and that's it's pretty amazing that these um, electrons are just able to move just in the right way that we can't calculate but but so that it looks like this extremely nice situation and so we have one more thing to consider now. So now we've considered um, what happens if there's charge inside a hollow conductor. All we need to consider is what happens if there is charge on the outside of a conductor, not on the conductor itself, but some electric field that is generated outside of a hollow conductor. Because we know this conducting area here is all going to have zero electric field. But we don't know what's going to happen here if we have some external electric field. So we have to figure that out. Okay, so let's consider that. So let's erase all of this. So, and also the conductor we're going to consider now isn't even going to be spherical. We're just going to consider a random conductor of arbitrary shape again. So this is our conductor of arbitrary shape. Um, looks a bit like toast. <laughs> um, but so let's say we have some electric field. I'm just gonna draw field lines. They're going like this. I don't know, like that. These are really weird, but it doesn't really matter. There's just some electric, external electric field, and we know there's no electric field here. And uh, maybe they're created somehow by these this weird charge distribution of weird charges surrounding this place. Some plus charge here. Yeah. But what is going to be the electric field inside here? So I'm not going to really prove this or anything, but the electric field is actually zero inside of here. And this is a phenomenon called electric electrostatic shielding I believe and that's pretty impressive it's just like how the any charges placed on the surface won't um, go to the inside it'll all redistribute it to the outside and that's pretty impressive how this any random electric field configuration will create zero E field inside a hollow conductor so we know it's happening inside a conductor because E field inside here would cause electrons to move to, and that would cause it to be zero here, but there's no electrons here. It's just air or nothing. So 
So this is actually a result of something called the uniqueness theorem. I believe it's in several fields and for electro um yeah and it basically it's a mathematical thing and it tells you if some boundary conditions are satisfied and you find a solution that satisfies those conditions then that is the unique solution and what you can find is that having constant potential throughout the inside and outside throughout this whole volume having constant potential is a solution to some of the conditions of this problem here that we're focused on and and then the uniqueness theorem basically tells you that that and if there's constant potential e is equal to zero and it completes the proof but the uniqueness theorem is a bit involved and actually the proof isn't that difficult but i'm not going to talk about it here and that's going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching